Hi everybody! Hello! And welcome to our weekly podcast, Sit and Knit for a Bit with Arne and Carlos. And we are, as always, your hosts... Arne and Carlos. We are here every Wednesday with a uh, podcast. Uh, if you're new, if you've never actually visited us before, if you're just discovering us, uh, we are Arne and Carlos, knitting designers. Uh, we do tutorials every Sunday, but we also have a podcast on Wednesdays that is not necessarily about knitting, but it is about all the things that we love to do in design. And it's always, it has something to do with crafts anyway. Usually knitting, but also crocheting and uh, other stuff. Everything. Everything. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's not a 100% knitting podcast, but there is a lot of knitting content within what we talk about. We do talk about our lives quite a lot, uh, don't we? We we'll want to tell you what happened last week. Yeah, and things like, like up, that. Update. Update. And if you hear, hear that strange noise in the room, it's uh, Helmut. Yeah. He's eating a bone. Yes. So currently we are in a place in our house where we have a big, big window over there. And uh, we had to separate Freya and Helmer. Freya is our little poodle. She is downstairs uh, in, in another room. Um, and we had to give her a little thing for to chew for her, her teeth yeah. to keep her quiet. Uh, and Helmer is up here with us because he won't go anywhere. No, he wants to be around us all the time. But then Freya, she makes more noise. Yeah. So... If she's in the room, she's constantly barking. Yeah. So she will probably, if she were here now, she'd probably go on the chair that is over there, look out the window, start barking at moose, moose or whatever, yeah. and then the Helmer would start barking. So this way, at least, we get a little bit of peace and quiet. Yeah. And once Helmer finishes with his stick, eating it, he will probably come and ask for a little cuddle. Uh, you know, this week we haven't seen the moose. Oh yeah, speaking of moose, yeah. yeah What's up moose. with the moose? We have like two poodles and one moose. Mm. He's been, I don't know where it is. We call him, as you remember probably, if you've seen this before, we call him Elgvis. Yes, and because he's, Elg he, is moose in Norwegian. Yeah, so he, and Elvis. So Elgvis he, the he, moose. He's been around the house for weeks now. But yeah, he has. The last day we haven't seen him, so I think maybe he moved back to the forest. Maybe he yeah. has all he needed in the forest. Yeah, we kept going out with the dogs um, looking for him. So we were looking for Elvis the moose um, outside. And yeah, about 10 days ago, we'd see him every day. But as the weather has gradually become better, uh, he has been... Uh, he hasn't been seen He's again. Been hiding. Do you think it's because he now has more to eat? I think or? maybe because now, like, when he was around the house, they had just ch chopped trees along the road, which yeah. is next to our house. So there was a lot of branches lying in the snow. So I think it was easy for him to go and eat it. Yeah. So maybe that's why he was maybe, around yeah. the house all the time. But now he's get, I guess the snow is melting so he can get fresh branches in the woods. Yeah, also. yeah, yeah. So it was getting really, I mean, it was really cold at the time. It was really, really cold. And uh, he was enjoying, uh, he, it looked like he kind of made a bed. Uh, yeah, yeah, like one place where we saw him like two or three mornings. So he was lying in the same place. But we see it when we walk the dogs. Every now and then we can see this like a bump in the snow. Yeah, where he was lying. Where they are lying. And it looked like he covered himself in snow as yeah. well. He's so uh, trying to put on his camouflage. Yeah, camouflage. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we had a, a moose that tried yeah. to move in with us. Um, it was really cold. We had about six weeks of extremely cold weather in January and February. Um, it was about around minus 20 uh, on average which is, um, I think it's around uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty cold. It's not usually, Norway has a very undeserved reputation for being a very cold country. It's not always this cold here. Usually we get that kind of weather in one year, we may get it for like 10 days, two weeks. And uh, the rest of the time, it is a little bit more um, human, yeah. humane. <laughs> humane. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I would say the normal temperature here, where we are in winter, is between zero and ten, min zero and minus ten uh, Celsius, which is between uh, thirty and fifty fifteen. So sorry, thirty to fifteen Fahrenheit. But right now, uh, it's right now it got more the way but it now should it's be. More, actually, it's warmer. Yeah. Like the last days, it has been like spring because yeah. it's been really warm, and I, I can't remember we had that heat in February. Mm. No, 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 it's March now. Yeah, 
yesterday it was really warm also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's very strange. So it's it's limited. Yeah, it kind changes. of flipped. Yeah. So right now yeah. it's about in the sun. It's about <laughs> this is South Norwegian. Yeah, talk, talk about, about the, the weather. weather. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right now it's about ten degrees plus uh, in Celsius, which is about fifty Fahrenheit. It's okay. I mean, if you go out in the sun and you wear a nice jacket, you're good. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, talking about the weather. Uh, today we are sitting next to this really beautiful uh, stove that we have in one of our rooms. Um, it's an Art Nouveau, so it's from 1910 or something I think like it's that. 19, I think the guy who fixed it for a set it was from 1910. Yeah, so it's, it's very beautiful. Nice. Um, it's It came from your family farm, yeah, from, didn't it? It was on the farm and then they moved it up to the, one of the out farms mm. where we stay in the summer with the cattle. And then it was so broken, so my brother decided to keep, take it out of the house. And I don't know, maybe he was thinking about throwing it away. Yeah. So I asked him, if, can I have it instead of... Yeah, and then we spent all the money renovating it or restoring yeah. it. Because we had we found this guy, or we knew this guy, who, he's like a stove doctor. Mm. He fixed all stove yeah. ovens and he fixed it for us. Yeah, it's really and nice. it's nice because it's got these four things here, these kind of niches and they're actually windows yeah these are a stone so when you burn in the in the yeah. oven you can see the the fire yeah through the stone. it's a it's a specific stone yeah. that grows but we can't that. burn now because it's too warm yeah it's too warm we, can't, we use it as table yeah and also <laughs> and also we couldn't possibly do that when we have a poor tutid there no our plant that follows us everywhere just like helmer she's getting better and better I isn't think she, she? Need new soil because i think this is like the soil we gave her was compost soil yeah and the whole winter we had this little black flies in the house yeah we don't like that no and they can they they're coming from the soil so yeah so well, she we needs should... a new change of soil she drinks a lot uh, we got her in 2017, she was huge, and then, you know, we were traveling so much that she started shrinking, but now that we don't travel anymore because of the pandemic, uh, we get to take better care of her, and she's growing and getting better. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we wouldn't have been able to, to uh, use the stove if she was there, because it gets really hot. But this kind of uh, iron stove, it'll get hot while you're using it, and then as soon as it stops, you stop using it, um, it gets cold again. It so yeah, our house is uh, of wood and we have uh, geothermal heating, very modern and actually good for the environment as well. It kind, yeah. of, it, it kind of, it's very energy efficient. And we have all the heating system in the floor. So usually it's too hot in our house to be able to use these. So they're more for kind of cozy times. Yeah. Um, and when it gets really cold, um, the, our, our system is not very efficient. No. And then we have electricity that kicks in to kind of heat the house but that's when we use the firewood it's like a complement to our to our system but you remind me of something you said it's good for the environment you know what i well not the firewood obviously no but the the geothermal, the geothermal system geothermal is good system. yeah that was good for the you said it was good for the I environment i think so yeah. yeah and talking about the environment i think i've done something really good for the environment this week what did you do i bought this this one Oh yeah, 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 yeah! You went to a um, yeah to a thrift store. I bought this piece in yeah. the thrift store. I'm saving the environment because you can't throw these things away. No, that's true. Yeah. And it's not new. I mm. buy old, <coughs> old stuff. Yeah. In case you didn't know, Arne has this thing for thrift stores, and uh, usually, um, if you're ever in Norway, and you ever come or go to a thrift store, uh, there is a chance that you'll meet Arne there. Because, yeah. uh, and this is something that Arne, you inherited this from your mother. From my mother, she was a... Thrift. Shop, she, she was a shopaholic shop. and she really loved shopping yeah. in thrift stores. And I got that too because you can find so much inspiration. Yeah. And look at this piece. This is so beautiful and it's unfinished. Look, this is actually, it came from an old lady, they said. Mm -hmm. And there was actually a box of unfinished things with yarn. And I'm going back on Saturday. I know you are because I'm having it because I'm, I'm you're gonna buy everything that she didn't finish yeah and I'm gonna finish it for her yeah it's cool though somebody got I mean this lady apparently she was fed up with her UFOs or maybe her unfinished died. off oh yeah or she could have died and and somebody decided that they would end up in a thrift store which is great yeah. because now we can uh, 
we can take them. So not, I mean, we don't have enough uh, unfinished objects, do we? No, not not. So really. we need more. Obviously. But you see, this is actually meant to be hanging on the wall, I think, like this. Yeah. But I'm going to use it this way, as a what do you call it? a back pillow. Yeah. The one you put in your, your back, back, like yeah. when you drive your car. So this will be a back pillow in the beetle. I but you have, I, I think that we were discussing how to finish it, and the idea is not to finish it in the same style, no. but to add our own kind of design or style that completely yeah. clashes. Because I found this, I found this old pattern that we have. It's actually a gift we got when we were in Tokyo. It's from our publisher. This it's is a beautiful a, gift. Yeah. It's a collection of old Swedish traditional patterns. And mm. I think if having something in black and white, very graphic, very yeah, cool, very around clean. the flower, just yeah. remove all the beige that yeah. was like on the background, and then we can put things like these patterns. Yeah, do a mash of different patterns yeah. would be really cool. Something old, traditional, like something graphic. So that, that it completely, so yeah, so cool. it completely clashes with this. Yeah, it and gives it a nice frame and a different kind of contrast, which will yeah. be very interesting. And maybe in black and white. Yeah, just to make the flower pop more. But I also found a catalog we did years ago with the the what do you call that dog hound's teeth hound's tooth yeah hound's tooth because look at this because we made this design many years ago a sweater with dogs hound's tooth hound's tooth and also one for a dog look at the little chihuahua <laughs> very cute so i think this pattern also could be really cool yeah let me see you haven't seen that for a long time yeah it's I a nice was, design yeah. i found it when i was looking through the the magazines just to find some mm. old patterns. Yeah. So I think the the hound's tooth could be really cool in black and white. Yeah, it's a nice design. Yeah. As a background. But so, I'm going to go down again and find more, and I'm going to give you some work. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. I, I like the idea. I really like the idea, and I also I, I'm also thinking it would be really cool to add some geometric figures that are quite oversized that are not at all in the same yeah. proportion as the flower. Um, to kind of give it that edge and yeah. to make it, you know, it's it's kind of like we take someone else's project and then we complete it ourselves in our own way. That way, um, that's actually really cool. That is a that's pity. actually really yeah. cool. But it's a pity if it should be thrown away. Because... Yeah, no, no, we're not going to throw it away. I don't think we can't give a pattern for this because this is someone, someone's flowers, yeah. but we add something. It's nice to do yeah, something Yeah, we can't, for we can't give house. out a pattern, but what we can do is give out an idea. Yeah. And what I think we should do, Arne, is we should pretty much, once we have the idea done, or we, when we have the, the design completed, we could do a video where we show, you know, this is the, this is the design, this is what we're going to put in, in this, and then we show the finished product once it's finished. Yeah. So we kind of document um, a design process Maybe and share with our viewers. Now. What, what do you call this stitch? This is a. Uh, is, that the, is this a petit point? No, it's yeah. not a petit point. No, it's what? the half cross stitch. Is that petit point? No, because the petit point you go yeah. like this. This is not. It's going going like that. It, oh yeah, it is a petit point. Yeah, it's like a petit a half point. Cross stitch. Mm, so, very nice. I think this. I'm looking forward to Saturday. I'm gonna go and get yeah, a get box some more stuff. Of unfinished projects and <laughs> yeah. And, Oh, it's but so it's funny. I, I, I love it. I think it's so nice. Yeah, but it's really funny because I mean, how many of you can relate with having unfinished projects? So <laughs> let's do a let's do a, a little a little um, project scientific project here. If you have an unfinished project, uh, raise your hand. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you see, everybody has everybody, an unfinished everybody, project. Everybody and, in this room. Yeah, and now you are gonna go and get someone else's unfinished project yeah, to finish uh, yeah. them off. Isn't that kind of like? Yeah, that's it's actually a, really it's cool. It's actually a very it's a cool it's thing. It's cool. It's cool because it's like you finish a dead woman's work in a way. Well, if she's dead. If she's dead. She or could have she gone. Could, she could have gone blind. Yeah. Or she could have just. But it's so you know she could have she could have just given up. It, you know she may be alive and she may be not blind, but she could have just said, "I'm so fed up with never finishing anything. I'm now going to put it in a thrift store." Yeah. But, but you know what but you could it's do. It's actually quite, quite a little bit like emotional in a way because yeah. last night I was taking out the beige yarn, and when you do it, you actually you think about all the hours that woman spent doing those stitches. 
Yeah. And I'm taking them out, but then I'm going to make something something out, else out of it. So it's kind of. But you know what? We're going to document. We're going to document the process. We're going to show you a new design based on uh, someone else's unfinished project. And you know what? Thinking about it. It's not a bad idea. We have an, a community of viewers, right? We have a community uh, that watch our episodes and also post on Facebook and, and yeah. stuff. And it could be really cool. I'm just thinking out loud here, but it could yeah, be yeah. really cool to create a forum where people could trade unfinished objects with other people and finish them up. Say that you're like yeah. really fed up. You you worked on something and then you lost your love for it or you kind of figured that uh, it's too difficult or it takes too much time. I'm never going to finish. Yeah. Make it's, something new. Yeah, instead of having it there and uh, having so much bad, you know, guilty conscience because you haven't finished it, why not trade it with someone else's project and then have someone else finish it mm. and, and put the result up. I mean, that could be quite delightful. Yeah, I know a lot it? of people make handbags of these embroideries, yeah. but they are finished embroideries. So it would be, cool, it would be cool like if other people are doing this, mm. if they're finishing someone's or maybe your own unfinished project, but yeah. it, in a different way. Yeah. That could be cool. Yeah. You know what this, I'm, this is cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I've already gone to my next idea because yeah, we these... We don't have time to be the, here now. Because. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is something we just have to do. But I mean, I, I, I get super excited about things like that. And then I have to realize I have to be careful because we've got, we've got <laughs> candles. candles behind us. Now, if you are worried about our hair catching on fire or our jacket catching on fire or something, uh, don't worry and think about this. If you're watching this video, it's been pre-recorded and <laughs> so if, if the video is on YouTube right now, it means we didn't burn ourselves and we didn't, you know, or accidentally maybe it turned, it go black. Yeah, no, we would never Something post happened. a video where we ca our hair catches on fire. So if you're well, watching, we, we almost burned him during Christmas. Well, well, we didn't okay, see, but that was an accident and we didn't actually see it. No, so I thought I burned my jacket. Yeah, it was smell. It smelled like burned wood. Yeah. Anyway, we just wanted to <laughs> to tell you. Don't worry. Uh, the candles are lit. But if you're watching this video, spoiler alert: nothing happened. We didn't burn ourselves. We're okay. Yeah. So, so Arnett, question. Question. Um, do you know exactly how many days it's been since we uh, I know. returned from our last trip? Abroad. abroad that was around this time for like a year ago we yeah. came from england yeah that's and correct you remember that was a nice trip 367 days uh -huh. not that i'm counting no but well, but um 367 days ago we got on a plane in london and we came back to norway where we live we drove home um, it was not our last trip on a plane because we did no, uh we did one more trip after that but that was in norway but it was the last time we flew to another country mm. and since uh that date so 367 days ago we've been here in norway yeah. and you remember we went to that italian restaurant in in england and it was so crowded and we yeah. had had this discussion during the dinner it's like do you think this is safe because then there was a lot of talking yeah about the, the that was around pandemic. february that was around february 28th or 27th of 2020 yeah. so at that time covid was already in europe um italy the it started it had already started on the news all the stuff on about italy uh but it hadn't it hadn't really reached uh, other countries in the way that it eventually did I mean, Norway closed down on March 12th of That's 2020. That's when we came from the, our last... Yes, that was our last trip, but that was last, a Norwegian trip. Yeah. So that's when Norway closed down. So up until, up until March 10, I think the situation was kind of under control, but you kind of already knew about COVID. And we were in this really crowded Italian restaurant. And we're like, ooh, this is really crowded. Um, and then we started talking about Italy, I, I remember. Yeah. So yeah, and that was our last trip. It was a Rowan. It was a Rowan trip, a promotion trip we did, uh, because we we work as Rowan designers. We have um, a long-standing collaboration with Rowan. We do knitting patterns for them, um, and we love working with the uh, the Rowan team. Mm. We love the other Rowan designers. I mean, they're so great. It's a great team of people, a group of people to to work with and to inspire ourselves from. Yeah. And it was our first trip to the Rowan flagship store in in yeah. um, in Saint Albans, the Rowan. The world f flagship store of Rowan, which is uh, located in St. Albans. Beautiful. And that's strange to think about. That's yeah. a year ago. And then I was thinking, um, so 367 days since we came back from our last trip abroad. 
And I was thinking, when was the last time we were here in Norway for 367 consecutive days? Had that ever happened? Exactly, it <laughs> hasn't. When, when I was a kid, maybe. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah <laughs> at some point, yeah, but uh, in the last 22 years, yeah. We have uh, left the country at least once. I mean, for example, I'm Swedish, um, but I, I live in Norway. Um, and uh, there was a time when my parents lived in Sweden. So, I mean, even that, we dri we'd drive across the border to Sweden to visit my parents, right? We would have done that, even if at that time we may not have been traveling like we did a few years ago, we'd still I go there. I think that time we went to, we, we had those trips down to to your parents mm. and to Copenhagen because this, that was so close. Yeah, and then and then we did our, you know, when we started, we started out as fashion designers, um, and we founded our Arne, the Arne and Carlos brand was a women's wear brand, um, and I was thinking about that too. I mean, typical of us to decide to do a fashion brand in women's wear clothing that we can't even wear. We yeah. had our, our, our main, our kind of like our signature piece at the time was not knitting. It was not a knitted uh, piece. It was actually our puff sleeve puff blouse. Sleeves. So we did these really girly, <laughs> very fitted uh, puff sleeved blouses in white. And that was our signature garment, which we could never wear. Anyway, I'm, I'm digressing now. But we also always. did, like when we did knitwear, you're wearing the prototypes. Yes, now, right, yeah, right now I'm now, wearing... The only things we wear that we knit is the hats and mittens yeah. and scarves. Like, we hardly have time to do sweaters. Yeah, and most of the knitted pieces we do have time doing, they end up in our archives. We have a collection yeah. of... Because we have to preserve this for the future and also in case we need to go back to it. Like, say we do a pattern and then somebody asks us a specific question mm -hmm. about a pattern. It could be something like you didn't, you didn't put down the size of the, or the length of the hat, say. Uh, which we probably would, or the height of the hat, which we probably would. But say we forgot, then we have to go back and, and find it and, and measure it. But right? we'd like, if if we do a, a sweater design, we don't have time. I like I work on those leftover yarn sweaters, but that takes forever. But we yeah. never have time to do a whole garment. Anyway, we're, we're digressing now. We're digressing now. What, what we were talking about was traveling, and <laughs> what I was what I was going to say was we 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 established our brand in 2012. No, 20, 2002, 2002. So, uh, oh God, it's almost 19 years. Huh? <laughs> Don't think about it. Yeah, anyway, no. we established our bra brand in 2002. And from that day on, uh, we were traveling everywhere, um, especially Paris. We used, to, we used to do Paris four times a year. Mm -hmm. And we were there so much that in the end, we, were renting, um, an we rented an apartment there. Uh, a cute little place in Rue de Rome. And we saw Remember? the yeah, and from the room, like when we had the two different, we stayed in two different apartments in that place. Yeah, we did. Yeah, the, the one in the basement we stayed the most. But yeah, the duplex. Yeah. yeah, but the one the year we had the top floor. The one in the was, attic was nicer because then you had the uh, sacre Yeah, in the like you, oh, yeah. that was beautiful. And you that's could, Paris. And you could lay in the bed and look up and see the stars in the yeah. sky. The other apartment was, like. There was like a mezzanine where the bathroom were. Remember yeah. when you went into the shower, you had to stay on your knees yeah. because it was so low up in the. That's floor. the reason we gave that apartment up because it was so. It was like a duplex, but it was a mezzanine level, yeah. and I'm too. I, I, I'm too tall. I was too tall for that apartment. That was so hard. I remember. So yeah, I, I had a lot of pain in my shoulders. <laughs> but yeah, we, we we used to go back and forth to Paris a lot back in those days. Uh, we used to go to the trade shows in Paris for Fashion Week in October and March always and then we also did the fabric trade shows in um, in September and February and then we had an, um, an agent in Paris uh, as well so we had the collection hanging there for the press and for sales and yeah so it was it was a lot of back and forth thing uh, from here um, to Paris do you, do you remember any particular yeah. stories from those days especially from the apartment because I remember we we were there for a few days and then we had to go back home but we were actually going back to Paris again oh okay that story yeah and I remember once you remember I had that bag I used the bag a lot like it was like a bowling bag a really old one maybe from the 50s yeah where you had all your art stuff yeah where I had all my stuff in there and like this you could carry one bowling ball in yeah. the bag Beautiful. And then Black we were we yellow. were in Paris for the trade show. I think it was for the fabric shows. Yeah. Um, and then we were going home to do 
a thing in Oslo. There was yeah. a fa oh, the, I remember now a fashion show with Rune. Oh, yeah. There was a fashion show in Oslo, so we're gonna go from Paris to Oslo to do a fashion show there. Then we were planning on going home for the weekend and then flying back. Yeah, and, and what and, happened? And then we left stuff in in Paris because we we since we since we were going back, we shouldn't bring all this stuff back home and. What we did was we left the car key in Paris. It, well, you left the bag in the Paris. The bag and the car key the, was in the, the bag. The car key was in the bag. So and, that, and, and the car was parked in the airport. In yeah, because we parked the car in the airport to fly to Paris. Well, then we were going to fly so home, good. drive the car to Oslo, drive the car home, drive the car back to the airport. And then, I mean, because that's our life. That's been our life for 20 years, yeah. doing exactly that. And then we met these people we met on the trade show. In yeah, the people airport. we knew. They were also in the fashion industry. They were Norwegian. <laughs> and, and it was actually, it was fun because when, when do you remember where your car key is? I mean, usually, if you think about it, what is the typical time to I remember think it? I we were checking into the... No, What's when we were boarding the plane. Yeah, we were boarding the plane. We were actually... <laughs> standing there looking for like on, to find our seats yeah and we were just behind these people and then i said oh my god i, I just you go no you said you said <gasps> i forgot the car keys <laughs> in paris and then this guy turned at me and well we knew that yeah and then he said but that that's that's no problem because i have a friend well he was a he was a little dodgy yeah. himself and he said he had a friend and this guy this friend he was like He's been in prison many times, and he was like his profession was stealing cars. Yeah. So he said, "Should we? Call, should I call him? He can come to the airport, and so he crazy. can break into your car, yeah. and, and, and he, he can, can even start yeah. it without a key. So this is no problem. I just call yeah. my friend now." And so my he, first in instinct was to say, "Oh, what a great <laughs> idea!" Because I was thinking, "It's our car. We're not breaking into someone else's car." But that was that was uh, me thinking out loud before I realized how stupid that was. And I was like, how do you stop a car? <laughs> yeah. with no, uh, no. And then it was like, no, I mean, th that's not the problem. It's us having anything to do with a car thief, breaking into a car. I mean, even if it's our car. <laughs> Um, no, that is uh, that is no. what I would call a big no no. I mean, that if was, Arne, if there's a big if there's a no no here anywhere, uh, it's, that's no -no. it's that do not associate with car thieves and do not try to steal yeah. a car, any car, your own whatsoever, car. even your own car. <laughs> so so I, I went from good idea to uh, Arne. I think we're gonna have to, uh, you know, because he was sitting behind us. I was like Arne. I think we're gonna have to talk ourselves out of the situation now. <laughs> so yeah, by the time we landed, we realized that this wasn't a good idea then, at all. Then we also had like we had this thing in Oslo, so we so we checked into the hotel. We checked into a hotel. We took the train yeah. to because our car was at the we airport. We just left the car there for one more night, and then luckily we have a neighbor who has a house up here, and she was in her house. Yeah, so she's we, she's over there. Yeah. So we, we call her and she has a key to our house and we have keys to her, her house. Which works out happens, really well. We can yeah. go and see. And then we called her and then she went into the house. She picked up the other car key. The day after, I yeah. think it was next morning, she was down where the bus stop. She drove down to the bus stop because there's a bus that goes from here to Oslo. It takes yeah. two, two and a half hours to Oslo. And then she handed in the envelope she, with the yeah. car key to the bus driver. She, and then she said, Arne and Carlos are going to pick the key up. And because this is such a small area, everybody knows who we are. So, you know, when she said, um, Arne and Carlos are going to pick up the key, he knew who we were. So we, when we came, uh, when we he drove to Oslo, his you know his regular route, <laughs> and we were waiting for him at the bus terminal. And the doors open, and he looked at us and he said, "Oh, here's your car key." Look, that's so, uh, that's cool. Yeah. So that's one of the story, one of the many stories from our travels. Actually, got really dramatic. Remember yeah, what when happened? When we drove home that night, that was scary because that's like I think that's the only time we almost crashed with a moose. Yeah. That was scary. Yeah, but big moose that came up. I could, we could see like I saw under his belly. He was yeah. running next to the car. It was dramatic. That and was I have to, I have to say though, uh, it's quite incredible though the human survival instinct and what you do to survive. Because uh, we're driving. It's dark because this is in September. It's uh, late at night because we had that fashion show. So say it was at nine, ten in the evening. Mm. So. 
we've had a very dramatic, you know, Paris trade show, right into a fashion show in Oslo, driving home quite tired yeah. at night. And still, when, when we suddenly see the moose, and it's kind of like in my mind today, we're talking, we're talking a second or two. It's like mm. a very quick very thing. Quick. I see the moose and I freak out and Arne is driving and Arne, his instinct is, instead of hitting the brake, is actually to hit the gas. So he accelerated the car and the car pretty much went and nudged the moose like I had that. Quicker than the moose. And then just and, the, and then yeah. kept going. And if I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, um, even till today, I, I think what would have happened if you would have hit the brakes? Oh, we would have a moose on the front wing. Yeah, and probably the horns would have yeah. killed us, Something. or Something maybe not. Could, but no, it it went well. It went very well. So, so talking yeah. about travel, look what I did. I I made a book. Oh yeah. From all the cruises we've been doing in Norway with Hurtigruten. So this is the first one in 2007 and the last one in 2020. Yeah, because Arne, Arne doesn't trust computers and... Uh... No, but you shouldn't because like uh, there are pictures on my computer. I try to open them and then they say the machine or something won't accept yeah. the file. So I'm making books. And I've collected pictures, the best pictures, from the old trips we had with Hurti Ruten. The first one was private, or like, like kind, yeah. kind of a job well, not really. or research thing. Oh, look at us. Look we at, are so young. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, if you want to laugh, this is it. No, look. And look, look at, at us. And look, look at this. We haven't changed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. We haven't changed. We look just the same as no, we did. No, I haven't. Longer. Even the ha even the hair color is uh, is the same. Whiter now. Yeah. But I think this is is so nice to have yeah, these look. books. <clears throat> this is me. You're so young. Yeah, I was twenty. No, I wasn't. <laughs> no, you were not. <laughs> I was thirty-seven at the time. Yeah. So this was our first. Uh, oh yeah. Look here. Here's Arne. This is actually interesting. These pages. This is the Svartis, the um, the iceberg in Buda or outside Buda. And um, we drove past it uh, this summer. Yeah, with the beetle. With the beetle. Nice. But I have to say, uh, looking at these pictures and then looking yes. at the, see? comparing it to the time when oh, we yeah, drove. Yeah, we saw the it, ice has been. Yeah, it's going in, going in, in, in and in. Up, yeah, up, up. And also in this one, I also say like I put in all the, the patterns we had for the knit-alongs we did yeah. on, the, on the cruises. Yeah. So this is like before the pandemic and. You talk to the to Gita from the travel agency. Yeah, we yeah, because she really want to plan more trips. So yeah. we just hope that everybody have the vaccine and the borders are open again. Yeah. And then I will start on the after. The yeah. <laughs> so in case you don't know, um, we do. So anyway, we have a very a very long standing love relationship with Hurtigruten. It's the Norwegian Coastal Express. It's not it's not a cruise ship in the sense that it's not a huge ship that attracts uh, 5,000 people or 10,000 people. It's a smaller ship. It's actually used to deliver the mail and also cargo. And no discos. There's no discotheque, the there's no casinos. It's more like an expedition ship and they don't hold more than four or 500 passengers. <laughs> you remember once there was this uh, ladies, older ladies, they went to another place from one city to another oh, one yeah. on this, this... They were on a dance crew. Dance yeah. uh, reunion yeah. thing and, and they... they, they started to dance. I don't know where yeah. the music came from. Well, from the loudspeakers of the bar. But I was very That's annoyed it. because I wanted to knit and the music was driving But they were nuts. so cute. Yeah, they were very yeah, cute. Yeah, they were like doing their yeah. dance. That was so cute. Anyway, so Arne, does not, Arne does not believe in computers uh, when it comes to photography. So he loves making these books. And actually, I appreciate them. Um, they're quite expensive, so I kind of always kind of remark how expensive they are to make, but, but actually... <laughs> but you're the, happy when they arrive. Yeah, I am happy when they arrive, and then you have all your memories here. So this is like our private point of view. And then we organize these knitting cruises. We've done that since 2018. Okay, oh, so this is now. This is um, 20, no, this is 2018. Um, and we organize these knitting cruises on this boat, which are lovely. We've had three, let's see, one, four. We've done four cruises before the pandemic. And uh, and it's always so nice to have all the memories um, from the cruises. We've got a group of people here. This is from um, the last trip. I think, this is or... from the no. This is from the twenty nineteen. 
the 2019 uh, Nordic Light, uh, sorry, Northern Lights cruise. Mm. So it's nice to have all the memories from all these cruises here. Um, it's something that we enjoy seeing. And yeah, we're looking forward to um, when we can resume them again. Yeah. Which may be if, you know, things start going the right way. We may consider organizing an knitting cruise in 2022. Yeah. I don't think 2021 is going to be possible because um, no. people still, you know, we still need to get control over the pandemic. And especially in America, I think Americans won't want to travel until uh, things calm down there yeah. because it's really bad there right yeah. now. It has to calm um, down. Norway is actually not bad compared to many other countries, but it's actually getting worse. Yeah. So I guess. It's going to get worse before it gets better again. But anyway, yeah, we, we, we're very nostalgic about all the trips that we did, both our knitting cruises and our uh, yeah, it's like now this is private like, trips. We're like finishing the first trips we did, and that's also why we, we brought out these pieces. Hang on, the... hang on. Do you remember? I mean, look at us. Look at us so young. <laughs> Do you remember why we went on this first cruise? Yeah, because they asked us if we could design some new uniforms for the crew for the line yeah for the line. For Hutu, the yeah. line but then they got some problems and it never happened but we got them nice well 2007 was the year when they hired us to design the uniforms and they sent us on the boats to get to know the yeah. boat and then 2008 the financial crisis kicked in so no uniforms for the crew no. and after that we kind it kind of fell through and we didn't yeah. do it but then we had the knitting cruises yeah but we got a nice trip out of it anyway <laughs> yeah so and uh, we did all the excursions, remember? Excursions and... North Cape and... And we took so many pictures because yeah. that was the first time, like on the other cruises, like... We didn't take so much, like, of the view because yeah. we had so many pictures from the views. But I mean, still today, I mean, you look at all these pictures and you're like, where is this? At least with the phones today. Yeah, but I write it with, uh, yeah. with the, like, the marker. But paper. this is things you remember better, huh? You have yeah. the... Um, you have the pictures of the crews, you've got some hands knitting, and then you've got um, the charts from the knit along. We do, we usually do, uh, when well, we did these cruises, we usually did a mystery knit along where we, um, where we, where, where, where we gave a clue every other day instead and of teaching classes. Because it's not, there's not, it's not possible to teach a class on this boat because the view is just simply breathtaking every moment. And we want yeah, people yeah, yeah. to enjoy that. We don't want them focusing on, on, a, on, on learning a technique, so what we did was... We tried like in the first time, yeah, but it didn't, it, work. It didn't work because yeah, you can, like in the middle of something, there's like a, this beautiful view and then people yeah. lose focus. So it's nice to just to have something that we need together. Yeah, and and because we're there for... More social. We're there for like seven, six days all together. So it's six days. It's so easy to divide it in three. So we did a knit along, like a mystery knit along with everybody. Um, every other day a new clue and then everybody's knitting together and getting to know each other and then we're helping people out if and they then need it, help. It can't be too difficult either, so it's, I don't know if it was a mystery in the end. I like, are we making a pillow, a cowl or a, a, tube, top. a tube top? Or a mini skirt. <laughs> or a mini skirt. <laughs> so, but now we, 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 yeah. we took this out of the archives and because for the next trips we're going to do something different now. Yeah. So we have this, this yeah, so this is the... Two, two designs for... The, if I remember correctly, Arne, this is the first trip uh, yeah. that we did the knit along. This is uh, March... No, the first one was the Christmas ball. No, 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 I'm talking about the mystery knit along. That's this one. This is the first one that we did. This was in March 2019. And uh, the design is inspired by wood carving. Traditional Norwegian wood carving. There is this little thing. It's kind of like... Um, it's, it's a very um, important tradition in Norway. It's like a stick or like a round thing, you know, not for not for doing bread, but for for sheets. So so you would take that round log, you can call it a log. You would wind your 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 sheets around it and then you would have this really beautiful flat uh, wooden piece yeah. of wood with a handle. And then it had beautiful wood carvings on top. And then you take that and you would uh, put it against this flat wood, you put it against the roller and then you'd roll it like this. It's like iron. Yeah, and this is how you would do your, your sheets and your linen. Mangletre. Yeah, mangletre. And this had a very special, or had a very special meaning because this was usually the engagement gift that a potential suitor would give his potential bride. So he would carve it himself and he would present it to a potential uh, woman that he wanted to marry. And then the woman would examine it 
and see whether he was a good... Uh, you know all these things. Well, I worked as a guide yeah. in the museum so, here, yeah. in the natural... You or, know more than me about this. Yeah, the museum yeah. of... Uh, of uh, the folk museum yeah. here, the cultural history museum. Anyway, they would carve the, 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 um, the, the piece of wood and, and do beautiful wood carvings. And then, the, and then the woman could, could see it, and then she could determine whether this was going to be a, a good husband, whether he, he was a hard worker, whether he was um, talented, gifted, whether he had a sense of aesthetics, and then she would, <laughs> she would accept or, or refuse the proposal based on that. Not very romantic, though, giving a woman um, that you want to marry a household There's a uh, reminder of all the work she has to do. Yeah, it's like when you have Valentine. You know, if you have, if you're, if you're on a Valentine's uh, or you're celebrating your anniversary, and then you give someone, the person you're celebrating with, you give them um, an iron. <laughs> it's like I would be so upset. That, that is a bad idea. Bad idea. Bad. But anyway, back in those days, it, well, apparently it wasn't a bad idea. So anyway, the, the design here is inspired by those beautiful uh, wood carvings, which are actually stunning. Um, so this was 2018. And then the, these are the two different sizes. This yeah, we did a larger one in 2018, yeah. and then we realized that um, to get people to complete the project in so six like days, yeah, we had to shorten it a little bit. Yeah. So you are wearing the one that we did in, uh, in the summer yeah. of 2019. This mm -hmm. is summer. Um, so we chose green and a little bit shorter version. Um, I like the colors. Yeah, and we've actually posted uh, or published the patterns for this cowl um, or pillow. It depends on, you know, if you, you can sew the sides and make it into a cushion. But I saw people made that. And also, yeah. also bags. Yeah. They made it into a bag. If you're daring, you could try it as a mini skirt, but um, or a tube top. I'm not so sure about that. For me personally, <laughs> no, not maybe not for you. No. but anyway, yeah, and and uh, we just, uh, we posted the pattern on our shop at arnacarlos.com because now we're we're you know we're already rethinking what are we going to do in our new knitting cruises if we ever get to do them again. Mm. Of course, we're going to do different kind of projects, so we decided to publish these, and we call this one Finmark. Mm. And uh, what is Finmark? And why did we call it Finnmark, Arne? Because Finnmark is uh, the most the fylke. Yeah, it's like the the, the northest, the northernmost Nord state northern uh, most. in mainland Norway. But it is also the name of the boat. The boat was also that we, named Finnmark. So for both these calls, we were on the MS Finnmarken. Finnmark. It, what, do we have a picture of that? Yeah, probably. And that's why we decided to give it the name of the boat. So it's from the boat. Yeah. That, you see. I didn't remember. There it is. That, but there are people in front. Yeah, that's. But it's. The boats have different names. Yeah, so MS Finnmark. Finnmark. Yeah. The, what was the first one we go? Went Nord Norge. Nord Norge. But in Nord Norge, we didn't do it in Italy because we were there for, no, for the Nord uniform. Nord and then in, in the last cruise that we did was in March 2020. So it's coming to soon 365 days since we disembarked the ship that was on March 14. Of 2020, two days after Norway closed down, and for that cruise we designed a set. So we did um, we did the hat, and this one, and the cowl. I think this part was this inspired of the, what you call that again, the symbol for tourist attractions at, yeah. in the center. But yeah. then we also had the inspiration of the the rose from this area. Yes, it's like something. Well, not only for this area, you have this also in Trond in Trondelag. Yeah. So kind of like the, the different tourist attraction signs and different symbols from the areas around in Norway. Kind of like a your own uh, tourist hat, but mm -hmm. very... <laughs> no, I mean, it doesn't... without it saying tourist. Yeah. So, um, and for that one, actually, what we... what the idea was we had everybody knit the cowl, and then on the last... and they, they, they were thinking, you know, tube top, miniskirt, uh, <laughs> cowl, you know, whatever. And then on the last day, the surprise was that we gave them all the pattern for the hat, and we designed it in a way that the yarn that they got. Yeah, that's uh, why it's red. Yeah. So you can use. The so the yarn that balls. that you got that we gave for the for the uh, knit along that there was enough, and this one we call Trollfjord. Troll, yeah, that's also another boat. Yes, but Trollfjord is a fjord in um, up in uh, Helgeland. Mm. Uh, which is uh, it's very narrow. It's very narrow with, with very high mountains around. So it's very cool because the boat in the summer the boat goes in and then it turns and then it does a three hundred sixty degree turn and goes out. In winter it just uses light yeah. to to show how 
And narrow I remember the first time we went into Trollfjord, we didn't see much because it was really bad, we bad weather, yeah, it was and dark it was in the rainy. middle of the night. But you could see the the lights on the on the mountains mm. just outside yeah. the, the boat. It was a bit spooky. It was, yeah, but fun. fun. I mean, we love these, cr and, I, and as we we're saying, they're not these really. They're not these really big boats, so you get to know the crew, you get yeah. to know everything quite quickly. Small boats, very, very small. And um, remember another reason why we had the Nittalongs? Because that's the easiest way to see and get to learn which people are in our group. Yeah, exactly. Because that's a hard thing when you go on the Hurtigruten on the cruise, because there are always people knitting there, because this is Norway after and, all. And there's a lot, yeah, and that's another thing. It's not a cruise cruise, so it means there's a lot of Norwegian people, yeah. and a lot of Norwegian people that go on board Hurtigruten, they're not there for the cruise, they're actually using the boat as transportation. They're going from A to B. Yeah, and then you um, knit. And then you meet people because, who know who we are. Yeah. And, and a lot of people knit, because there's nothing else to do. You can read a book or you can knit or just sleep. <laughs> so, so everybody walking around with their little Arne and Carlos bag. And, and they knit on the same project. Because yeah. I remember the first time I was sitting down with two women. I taught them they were on our cruise. And they weren't. And after a while I understood they weren't. Yeah. But it was nice to talk to them, but it's like it takes time just to get to know all the people. Yeah. And But it's nice. And you know you probably heard what I've been doing this week also. Like, I've done many weeks now. What? Eye cording. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The eye cording is going... I've been eye cording like crazy and... Oh, and you I know was... what else? No. The episode that we posted on Sunday has been so popular, it's just insane. So people like eye cording. Yeah. And you know, I was also doing all this art journaling and going through all the magazines and when I took magazines out of one shelf i found something i found i have a gift for you oh a, a surprise oh really you haven't no. seen it no i because i'm hiding it well no but i'm very excited what i broke it oh no my surprise no. -da! oh oh i get my own yeah we had two i, I knew we had two but i could ah, not remember now we don't have to fight anymore no? I didn't remember where it was, and then I took out a pile of magazines, and then the, this mill was behind all yeah. the magazines. So but now, you know, we ha we have to we have to go on YouTube also and check the videos, the instruction videos to use this. I think there are instructions there because when I start, I always struggle for a while, but yeah. then it goes like. And I don't want to struggle, but oh, cool! But so yeah, that's so Swedish because you read instructions. I heard that it's typical Norwegian, we don't read instructions, true, we yeah. think we can make it, so we just start. You remember like when we put yeah. up the IKEA kitchen? Well, yeah. You that's read, true. you really know how to read. Well, instructions. not only that, but I'm, I'm, uh, I have this theory. Okay, so I was privileged as a child that I lived in many different countries and I learned many different languages. So, so I, I have this, this kind of uh, feel for languages and that actually even goes for pictorial, I mean pictures, so everybody that has struggled with an IKEA bookshelf knows that the instructions are pictures, not any text. And it's quite incredible because you, you know, you give me that, I can't, I mean, I'm the clumsiest person in the world and I am really crap at anything that has a tool. Put a tool in my hand and more than likely, no, if, you're not, if you're not supervising me, I will injure myself with it. However, I can read the instructions really well. I and understand then you tell everything. Me how to do it. Yeah, so I kind of, <laughs> I, I kind of, that's one of my, my uh, superpowers. I read pictures and can translate that. So whenever we have to, whenever we're struggling with an IKEA thing, um, I'm always the one reading this, you know. And if Arne gets it, he puts it upside down. He's like, yeah, but you know, I hardly never look at it because I, I open the open things yeah. and then I look at the pieces and then I think that this has to be go, this yeah. has to be put together there. And, and then it's a big success until we realize that there's 30 screws that he didn't use, and we're like, uh oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, something's wrong, and then we have to do it again. I don't know why this is a Norwegian thing. Um, but I heard it's a Norwegian thing. It's we a don't, Norwegian we don't thing. look at these things. You don't look at it. We we try and see what happens, and if we can't make it, then we might go back and look at the instructions. Hmm. Okay, Arne, I did something I wasn't supposed to do it, but what I did you, do? you said don't cross your legs, and I cross my legs. Uh, because you look so good from top. Okay, I, so so <laughs> we'll do an, another experiment here. <laughs> Everybody, come on! If how many people? How many of you guys? Raise your hands if you 
in the past 367 days, if you have been to a meeting where you, where you fixed yourself up from the waist <laughs> up, raise your hands. Yeah, and, and, then, and then if you didn't really do anything from the waist down, uh, you know, you just are wearing what you're wearing, uh, raise your hands. Well, right now I'm wearing um, some really ugly trousers um, that I wasn't supposed to show because I was, you know, thinking waist up is fine. Yeah. And I put on the trouser because we're going out after this. Well, I'm going to change when because we go I out. have some serious shopping to do. Not in the other thrift store because that's not open until Saturday. Well, we're going to buy food. We have to buy food, and I have a plan with the i cord, so okay. I have to look uh, for okay. something. And I finished my Nancy Drew. Oh yeah, yeah, you're reading Nancy Drew right yeah, now. And there were more Nancy Drews in that show. I'm, I'm kind of hooked on it now. Yeah, but she still annoys you, doesn't she? Little Miss Perfect. I'm getting used to her now. I think what's it's not annoying, it's kind of interesting. You know, I have to remember this was written maybe in the 1930s, so it's yeah, it's bit, old. Things it's are old. different, but it's interesting and but there are things that happens that is so um ooh, sounds Un improbable. Un yeah. improbable. In real in re in the real world, I don't think so many things can happen so quick and stuff. No. But it's also But it's fiction, it's a book. Yeah, but, but when I read it it, I remember some of it from I read it before, so mm. I, I'm gonna read more. Yeah, I cross my legs again, but now everybody knows that my trouser doesn't match my my. Yeah, I'm dressed from the waist up pretty much, and then the I rest. I think is... you can't see it on the camera, but looking it from here, it's very strange. <laughs> yeah, it's like two different bodies, right? I have one body from here up, and then <laughs> and another body, and then it's kind of like you cut and you put together two completely different. Yeah. But anyway, I'm guilty of that, as everybody else is. I'm sure yeah. that every single person, every single one of you, have done that. You've raised your hands, right? I think we can. I think this this is uh, 300 and how many 67? Well, so 367 days since we traveled. Yeah, I think it has abroad. changed something because right now, I feel so comfortable being. I feel comfortable being at home, and I, I'm thinking about going on a on a tr tour, like on a plane it, that is kind of a little bit scary at the moment because yeah. we haven't done it for so many so months. so last time we went on a plane was on uh, March 14th that is when we returned yeah. from Bergen and it wasn't I mean it wasn't a very memorable trip because we had a souvenir with us COVID-19 <laughs> yeah right Oof. which we got more than likely on the boat um, and after that we haven't been on a plane um, and every, you know the only thing I can think about right now is I want to travel, I want to travel, I want to travel, right? That's what I'm thinking about. I want to go to Venice, I want to go to Paris, I want to go here, there, there, there. But we can't, and we kind of have to make the best out of it. And then there was an opportunity that actually opened up because um, there's a beautiful island north of Norway called Svalbard, which is, uh, which is part of Norway. It's very close to the North Pole. They don't have much COVID there. No. And we had a, a, the opportunity of traveling domestic to uh, Svalbard, where we have a friend. Actually, our neighbor's daughter lives there, um, and we've, talk, we've been talking about it so many years that we want to go there. And we realized this year that if there's a if there's a place we should go, we should it's, Svalbard. it's Svalbard because there's almost no COVID there. I don't um, think there are. Right. Not much. I mean, there is, but not much. And then we kind of started thinking, yeah, but then we have to sit on a plane for. Yeah five hours it's and like, then i heard you have to take the test and you have to take the test like i think it's 24 hours yeah. before you board the airplane yeah you have to and have a covid you test have, you have to be on the airplane for like is it two hours it's or? two it's two and a half hours to tromsø yeah. and then it's a couple more hours to svalbard and you need to wear a mask and you need to wear a mask when you're in transit at the airport it's just too much hassle but then really. it's also like even if you have a mask or anything or well, they're like so careful you have to sit so close to strangers. yeah it's just not appealing I, I don't feel that that's no. something i will do right now you see immediately when we talk about yeah, it i go, go like this. i do this with my hands because i'm feeling like i want to protect myself <laughs> yeah no it's not appealing and we at had all. another discussion yesterday because like i complained because I, I think i have so much to do and there's not enough time no like the days are too short yeah and you said but how did we manage to do all the stuff we did well, yeah. when we traveled and and that's a good 
I, I can't understand how we made it. And we're not talking about, we're not talking about, when we say travel, we're not talking about a little trip to Paris, you know, three days. We're talking 150 days a year yeah, that and, we were on we the road. And we still manage to do things. And now we have all the time in the world. Because we don't travel. And I think things are like piling up around us. And I, But maybe it's also because we have, we have time to come up with new ideas. Yeah. So it's like it's boiling in our head. Yeah. Like now with the embroidery and the new collection we're working on and yeah. yeah. So I think yeah. maybe that's the problem. Yeah, that's the problem, yeah. And when it comes to traveling, my kind of conclusion is um yeah. I'll travel again for sure. I'm, I'm getting on a plane. I mean, driving a car is different, but I'll get on a plane again um after I've had the vaccine, which I'm yeah. taking and uh, I think you're the same. Yeah. But not even that. I'm going to get on a plane after I've had the vaccine and when the pandemic is under control again. Until then, I don't need it. I feel like I don't need no. it. And I really miss traveling a lot because I really love it. But, you know, there's a lot of other things that we are enjoying now. So it kind of evens mm -hmm. out. I mean, you know, you have a day when you're like really restless and you're thinking like, oh, I wish... I wish we could travel. Maybe the weather is a little lousy that day. But then you have a day like today with blue skies and it's just gorgeous. And all you want to do is, is pop on um, some snowshoes or skis or just take the dogs out for a walk and, and just have a wonderful day. So there's, 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 a, there's I something... I think we're good at making the best of everything. You have to make the best of everything. Um, and right now travel isn't something we can do or want to do. We will do. go out so again. We won't. We will travel this summer. We have yeah. some road trips planned yeah we have plans so uh, we, will, we will travel in norway which is also nice especially when we go in the middle. yeah but you had some news didn't yeah you i do some? but we, don't we have a little something else well, to we have, show we have so much stuff in there because now yeah so I'm, many things so little time huh? now i'm doing all this uh, scrap or art journaling or scrapbooking i also found these these are really nice and these are like small crochet pieces that should be a blanket once and then I just put it away and I forgot about it. But, there's, so. uh, but I'm looking at them and I'm seeing they're slightly different from a conventional granny square, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's different. It's a little more like a little flower or a little star yeah. or something. But it's all leftover yarns and, and I started to put them together. At first I made some a crochet technique we, we worked with before or we what you can we come up what's that we invented In, yeah and then came up with it was too wide or too thick so i used another one we come yeah. invented so this is like the other way to crochet them together so this will be a blanket in the future yeah or um i mean <laughs> not that it's but yeah it could be a lot of things i'm sure people will enjoy uh, a pattern for this um if you will um, Put it in the comments field so that we may consider doing the pattern. But it but is it, really lovely. I yeah, love the yeah, little florals. But it's florals. good for smaller pieces of yarn. If you mm. don't put them in the eye corner machine or the knitting mill, you can use this. But we have so many of these also. Yeah. We should finish stuff because... Yeah, we, we should. We should we keep digressing, but let's go back to the <laughs> I-Cord very quickly. Um, we're going we're gonna to make some projects using i -Cord so that people can visualize what you could use the knitting mill and then the the eye cord that you make so we have that in mind so keep your eyes peeled on sundays in the near future we will have at least one maybe two really fun tutorials for you guys that we can't wait to do yes. and then of course the if we come back to this i think that we should definitely make a blanket out of this yeah. or a little you, you know what a we could do a little blanket. baby blanket and then put out a pattern um if you want a pattern for this because i mean it, it, look at this i mean how lovely is this it's like a granite square in miniature yeah so so let us know if you want a pattern for this we will uh consider it um, and it's always good doing this podcast because we can interact with our audience yeah. and see what it is they want um and then maybe try to you know be as as helpful as we possibly can so what but about yeah. spending like two Two hours crocheting these together, two yeah. hours doing embroidery, two hours doing mm. collection. Yeah. So much to do and so, so little time. So much to do. So and now time. I can hear Freya is going bananas Yeah, downstairs. so we need to pick up Freya now. I think she's been... I mean, we, I left water. She had her stick 
that she was chewing on. She's but, annoyed yeah. now. But she, now she's annoyed. She's in a, in the living room downstairs. Sure. Uh, we're going to finish this up with a couple of announcements. We've got good news and bad news for you guys. So uh, the bad news is not bad, bad. But let's start with <laughs> the bad news, Arna. I'm going to let you do that. And then I'll bad do the good news? I lost you now. Bad? Oh, yeah. We're not doing any blocks. Today. Today. Yeah. Because we have, we have had it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the bad news is we're not doing any blocks because Arne had it. Because we have so many squares. I, I just need time now to sew them together. Yeah. And I also started a new project, but I will show that next time maybe. Mm. With the same blocks. So that's... I have, I have a lot of blocks behind it. But... Yeah. So that's that's really we don't have a block this time. no block so, so sorry knit the old one yeah knit an old one <laughs> and maybe oh who knows maybe next week we'll bring a block so that's yeah, the we, bad we'll news see because we've done this for a year now yeah we need some changes yeah that's the bad news and I have to say sorry not sorry I'm not sorry even no I, I hope I'm not that. being mean now but but yeah we yeah this but week you have good news yeah this week we decided we had it with the blocks but we do have good news okay. <laughs> So we are going to be commemorating. I mean, we don't want to commemorate one year of COVID because that is nothing to celebrate. However, the, the circumstances were such that we got, on the, we got off the boat on March 12th. Hmm. No, sorry. On Mar Norway clo closed down because of COVID on March 12th. We got off the boat on March 14th of 2020. We got on the last flight that we did until now yeah. and came home. We had a little souvenir, which was COVID, but at the time we didn't know that. Um, Sunday, March 15, Arne and I decided to start our quarantine podcast, which we then did, so 15, 16, 17, so which we did on, um, I, I suppose, the 16th mm -hmm. of, of March, we started the Arne and Carlos Quarantine Knitting Podcast. And because of that podcast, you're watching us now, because now it's called Sit and Knit for a Bit. And it's something that we have included in our in our repertoire of things or content that we post on YouTube. So instead of celebrating that it's a year since COVID, because that is not a thing to celebrate, believe it, we've had it. Uh, instead of that, we are going to celebrate that it is a year since we decided to get to let you know us better with the podcasts. Mm -hmm. And how are we going to be doing that, Arne? We're going to celebrate spring. We're also. going to celebrate spring. And Easter. And Easter. So it means that regular our regular schedule is this. So Sundays we do tutorials. And then on Wednesdays we do sit and knit for a bit. Starting on March 17th, which will be the day that we have decided is the one year anniversary mm -hmm. since we launched the quarantine podcast. So starting March 17th of 2021, we are going to be doing a daily podcast that is going to last for 12 days uh, and it's going to be the Arne and Carlos Spring Podcast. Yeah. And it's going to be a special one, isn't it? <laughs> yes. It what are we going to do? A dozen? Is that 12? Yeah. A dozen eggs yes. for Easter. And I'm going to hide the eggs somewhere. Which you do, don't you? And you're going to pick, find them. You're going to look for them. Yeah. So it's going to be the Arne and Carlos <laughs> Spring Podcast. We will come in every day, similar to what we did uh, for the Quarantine Knitting Podcast a year ago, and also similar to what we did with our calendar in December. Yeah. We're going to come in every day. We're going to talk about spring in Norway, what we do, how we spring clean, how we celebrate Easter, how we do all these things. And every day, at the end of the podcast, we are going to look for a knitted egg. <laughs> the knitted egg is then going to end up in this beautiful thing that we've done. Uh, which has branches that we so because in Scandinavia spring is all about bringing nature inside to kind of get it quicker so we've got we've got our setup we got a vase and in the vase we have a, a lot of seasonal branches, branches. Of and trees and that is what we're gonna be doing yeah. so 12 days means a dozen eggs <laughs> and it means that we will be here every day from March 17th until March 28th yeah. During those 12 days, we will not be doing any tutorials. It's all going to be about, uh, about spring. And Easter. And hopefully we will. We haven't decided how we're going to film it yet, but hopefully we may. And we're going to promise. We're not going to promise too much, but we hope that we may get outside for a few episodes as well, yeah. if we can. Um, we can. If we can, we will. <laughs> we'll see. 
So that is the, that is our our um, announcement, which we hope uh, you're looking forward to. And just as with the calendar, we are releasing a dozen eggs on our web shop. Yep. And if you are on our mailing list, you will receive um, an email to get it at a really nice discount. Um, and the email is going to be sent tomorrow. So tomorrow is March 4th, 2021. Um, if you're not on our mailing list, get on our mailing list now. Um, you'll get the offer to get the, uh, the, the dozen eggs at a very good price. Mm -hmm. And then we're also going to be launching it in our web shop for everybody else. So um, if you're on our mailing list, you get an exclusive uh, preview. Uh, and then, yeah, and then you can do your eggs if you want to do them now or if you want to wait until we start in, on, the, on the 17th. You can do them then. And I'm sure you are not going to want to miss uh, all our stories about Easter because without giving too much away, Easter is very specific here in Norway. It's not celebrated in a... I would say Easter in Norway is more about skiing and the outdoor living than anything else. Mm. Um, and it, it is the time when families come together to spend their days outdoors because as all Norwegians know, there is no bad weather. Only bad Clothing shows. shows. Correct. But so it's all about the outdoors. <laughs> but we can. Maybe we should stop now because Freya. She's... Freya is upset. So we're gonna go free Freya uh, from I hope her. She's not tearing the house down. No, no. She's barking at something <laughs> outside the window. Listen. It's quite. It's okay. Yeah. So we're gonna go get Freya. We are gonna get. Well, <laughs> I'm going to get dressed from here down so that we can go shopping. We're going to get groceries and uh, look for some... Oh, Arne is going to probably want to go into a thrift store or some something. Some uh, And we're going to rescue Freya from uh, the living room yeah. and get her out of there. Uh, and it's been lovely spending this half hour or whatever it is with you guys. Yeah. Very enjoyable. Very enjoyable. Um, and it was nice <laughs> reminiscing about our trips abroad to, you know, what, back in the day when we yeah. traveled. Also fun reminiscing about the Norwegian uh, knitting cruises that yeah. we organized. And fingers crossed that we can do one in 2022. We we're not going to make any announcements uh, about any cruises until we're sure that the situation is going the right way. Um, until then, there's not going to be anything. Uh, so bear with us and have patience. And um, yeah. yeah, formalities, quickly. If you like the videos, put your thumbs up and put on the comments and stuff. Comments and stuff. And if you subscribe and put on your notification, you will have like a pling every time there's yeah. a new video out. Yes. And you won't miss an episode. Perfect. Perfect. Don't and yeah, and please subscribe to our channel. It really helps us uh, in terms of being able to produce uh, two episodes weekly, soon to be 12 episodes in a row each day in spring. Yeah. So we look forward to uh, coming back uh, with more. Uh, so we're going to be back again on Sunday with a regular tutorial. And then next week again, and you sit in it for a bit on Wednesday. Yeah, and then we will do the And Easter then we will do the spring, spring podcast. So we look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, Helmer, come down. Ska vi gå till Freja? Ska vi gå hem till Freja? Ja. We're going to go pick yeah. up Freja now. So okay. thank you so, so much for watching and we will see you again very soon. And Arne, I'm going to ask you to please um, turn off the camera because I'm not getting up as long as that yeah. camera so is running. See you next time. See you Bye. next time. Bye. <laughs>